This time, the FBI didn't just set up a sting. They set up a honeypot. And I talk about it with Mr. Matt Gagnon coming right up, along with a couple of other major points this week, including what has been happening with the Olympics and cybersecurity. So here we go. Craig. Let's get into some of these topics if you can. I, I had an interesting conversation yesterday with some folks about tech policy, what's been going on, censorship, etc. It's obviously a pretty uh, common topic when you talk to especially conservative-minded folk. You know, they're pretty upset about what's going on there. there. And one of, the, one of the people I was talking to said to me that, that somebody must have dimed them out, <laughs> that they had a, a Facebook post that was blocked because Facebook was maybe notified that they did something and, and it was pulled down here. That uh, that brings to mind this story about the do you know an extremist prompt at Facebook? Are they testing something like that where you basically are diming out your neighbors and, and seeing stuff and then all of a sudden you're reporting to the <coughs> authorities at Facebook that somebody has an opinion that is just not okay? Yeah, this where could this possibly lead? This is crazy. They are doing that. Facebook has admitted it. And you know what shocked me the most about this isn't that, hey, did you know an extremist or are you an extremist? And they let you report people. CN actually reported on this, which just shocked me, frankly. But they say this is part of a uh, what they're calling a redirect initiative. So if you're looking for something, they'll send you somewhere else if they don't think what you're looking for is appropriate. And then they're asking you, are you an extremist or do you know an extremist? My gosh, people, don't you read history? Where is this going to take us? I don't know. It's a good question, Craig. Clearly, this is part of the evolving narrative here of exactly how social media companies are trying to moderate content and deal with their perception of what extremism is and whatnot. I, to me, though, I, I have this question. Maybe you can answer it for me. Is a market just not at play here? With Facebook continuing to do things like this and alienating like half the country and beyond our country, right? This is happening all over the world, right? Is there not a market for a company that doesn't do things like this, that doesn't moderate its its content like that? Can we not have something out there that clearly takes out violent content and real threats and just like sick, disgusting racism or whatever, but more or less is a free speech zone otherwise? You're telling me that couldn't survive in today's world? What's wrong with that? Why can't it happen? Where is the market? <laughs> If you're going to survive something like that, as a startup, you need, first of all, the seed information. You need people to start signing up, and you need money coming in. And Facebook is doing everything it can. Anybody that's a startup that looks promising, whether it's WhatsApp or Instagram, they will be purchased. They'll be bought out. Now, these guys might be saying, I'm going to have a free speech platform. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. We know what's happened with a couple of those already. Right. But what Facebook does is they come along and say, your company's worth about $50 million. How about I give you a billion for it? And then Just they wildly like over, Microsoft. yeah, overvalue it. Then Microsoft does much the same thing with potential competitors and drives them out of business or buys them out of business. So the, Facebook is in a very uh, interesting spot. Plus, then there's the whole section uh, 210, right? And you can sue a, a newspaper out of existence. If a, if a newspaper publishes a story uh, and that story is not factually accurate, they go out of business. So the newspaper takes some time, tries to do some investigation, gets multiple sources to confirm, and then publishes this. Facebook doesn't have to worry about any of that stuff. So why are they doing this in the first place? And they, they are wildly profitable to the terms of hundreds of billions of dollars. And they just don't care. They have what they have, uh, uh, morals is what they call them. I don't know. And they're saying we cannot allow this to happen. And they are leading the country down the primrose path, although the numbers seem to be showing a lot of people ditching Facebook. And there are some other platforms that are trying to get started, trying to go, but it just isn't happening. There, This is not a free market system. And we don't have one in this country. We haven't had full free markets for over 100 years now. 
It, it's highly regulated. They pick the winners, and specifically the government has picked Facebook and Google as two of those winners by providing them with legal cover. I, I think we've got to pull back the kimono and look at what's really happening here. Craig Peterson joining us, as he always does on uh, Wednesdays at this time, talking over tech topics. Uh, Craig, one of the other things that's happening in the world soon here is the Olympics. I've been watching a lot of Olympic trials, a lot of uh, things on TV as we prepare for this. I'm an Olympics nerd, so I love this stuff. And there's obviously a lot of competition at the Olympics, but there's a different, darker background of competition out there. And it's the cybersecurity experts trying to protect the infrastructure at the Olympics against... The bad guys, as you might say. And how does that play out? Because this is, nobody's really reporting on it. Nobody talks about this much, but this is a really big part of this gigantic event. Think about what's happening in Japan right now. They are having these Olympic kind of trials things, if you will, where we're losing four out of five of the basketball games. I can't believe that part. But here's the bottom line. There will be no spectators. Everyone in the world that's interested in seeing the Olympics has to watch it online somehow. All of the major news networks are getting their feeds, and a lot of that's going over the Internet. There's a lot of exposure. We have all of the people who are competing, who are using special apps, who have special electronic controls. We had a huge problem last time around in 2018 with the Winter Olympics because there were some cyber criminals that managed to bring the whole thing down. So we are really on our toes worldwide now, including here in the U.S. What a target. It's a beautiful place for the bad guys to go make a name for themselves, ransom, et cetera, et cetera. So there are whole teams. I've got a little bit of inside information here, but there's whole teams of people around the world that are monitoring what's going on, are looking into everything that looks like they're being probed, every potential hack. They are really staying on top of it. And these teams, Matt, are some of the best in the world. They're teams I've worked with before. So knock on wood, it'll be okay. But the Olympics, they are a huge hacking target. Finally, I want to also ask you about, uh, speaking of the bad guys and trying to take them on here, there's ways of trapping them. And the FBI created an interesting one here. I mean, Google Pixels involved in this. A very interesting story here. D did they use a honeypot to, to, yeah. to basically entice some of these people in and then trap them and then get them? How, the, yeah, how did this work? Like just Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> he stuck his head in and he got stuck. The FBI came up with a real interesting concept. That is the bad guys want to be able to communicate privately. So they modified some pixels. Now, they did it in such a way that, you know, you, they turn off the cellular. They turn off, they, they remove cellular. They remove the uh, GPS trackers. They removed a bunch of things. And then they sold these phones uh, on the black market or out on the dark web saying, well, these phones are going to keep you safe because of this, that, and the other thing. And we've got a special operating system. They called these devices an arm. And the bad guys started using it, and, and they didn't really do any research on them. And uh, they were recommending it to each other. These hacker groups, these criminal organizations that were smuggling people, right, kidnapping people, uh, selling arms on the dark web, et cetera, they started using it for anonymous communications. What they didn't know is everything that was sent on these devices, everything that was done with them was sent to the FBI. You know, so what, some of this went to Interpol and others. So the concept is great. Let's turn off the cell. Let's turn off the GPS. Let's remove them from the device. The, the problem was they didn't know that law enforcement was, in fact, monitoring everything that was being said. There are more than 12,000 smartphones like this that were out in circulation and heavy use by the bad guys. And now you can buy one of your very own FBI monitored phones on eBay. People are starting to buy them because they're based on a Google Pixel 4a. They do have custom firmware in them, which is a bit of a problem. And they do have uh, Arcane OS on them as well. But people are trying to figure out, mm -hmm. why can't I get my, my phone to work? I just bought on eBay. But they have been shutting down major criminal organizations worldwide 
because of this honeypot. They well, really got stuck. It, they, they got him. Basically, basically, it's a way of uh, it's a way of trying to lure him in, and it works ultimately. And so, Craig Peterson, our tech guru, joins us on Wednesdays at this time. Unfortunately, Craig, we're out of time, so we have to stop here. But again, you can hear him on Saturdays. Thanks a lot, Craig, and we will talk to you again next week. All right, take care. There's nothing that helps uh, this show get out better than having you subscribe to the podcast. I appreciate you guys listening. I, I can't tell you how much because it does help get the word out. And that's what I'm trying to do is help everybody understand what's going on. So please, whatever platform you're listening on, go ahead and subscribe. And if you wouldn't mind, give me a five star rating. And the 800 pound gorilla is still our friends over at Apple iTunes believe it or not when it comes to the ratings of these different podcasts so if you could go there the easy way craigpeterson.com slash itunes that'll automatically redirect you to my page on itunes craigpeterson.com slash itunes oh by the way in case you didn't know i'm also on youtube now posting a lot of these podcasts as little videos yeah you'll see when you get there and that's at craigpeterson.com slash youtube take care everybody bye-bye